Hello and welcome to another Tycho video. A few days ago I received a request from another astronomer who had captured some images of Comet 12P and his question was simply what could you do in Tycho to improve the resulting image? So what you're looking at here this is his initial effort at processing uh, the data and I want to state up front that I am by no means an expert in astrophotography. Most of my expertise is in creating astrometry and photometry measurements of moving objects, things of that nature. So for me, this is somewhat uh, a little bit outside my domain of expertise. However, I do have some familiarity with the tools and settings in Tycho to produce nice looking images. So that's kind of the whole point of this video is to walk through the steps that can be done in Tycho to ideally achieve an image that might be somewhat of an improvement over what we have here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to launch the Tycho software. So here is the image manager and I'm going to go to list add images and I'm just going to add in the images that he provided. There are 37 images here and they're each 30 seconds in duration. Now a little bit more background information. These were captured with a 110 millimeter refractor telescope using a color CMOS camera. Now beyond that, I do not know uh, much about these images. For example, I do not know what calibration, if any, was done to these images. Uh, did he use a dark frame or a flat frame or anything of that nature? So with that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and go to Action, Calibrate Images, and just do minimal amount of calibration. I'll, I'll choose Normalize Images and Fix Hot Pixels. So with that, I'll click OK and give it a moment here to complete that operation. And because these images were captured with a color camera, then I have to choose uh, debayer operation as the next step here. So I go to action, debayer images, and all this does is it separates out the uh, color channels into different uh, files here. So we'll have output is split RGB. So the red, green, and blue color channels will each be stored into a separate file. And the mode here is variable network gradient. So these are just the settings that I'm using here. If you want to learn a little bit more about them, you can. So I click OK and give it a moment here to complete that operation. The next step then is to do plate solving. So I go to action, plate solve images. And in this scenario, I have unchecked solve only the reference image. Uh, what that means is it will try to solve all of the images. And this usually works quite well uh, unless you have extremely wide field uh, instrument in which case it might not work. But uh, really, even if you can't have it place solve all the images, you can still uh, carry on through these steps just fine. You'll just have to choose star match rather than WCS match as the alignment mode of operation. And I'll, I'll get to that in a moment here. So these are, these are the uh, plate solve settings that I have here. Uh, just basically a lower and upper bound, and I have auto for the other settings here. And again, I have it to uh, solve all of the images by unchecking this option here. So I click start and I go ahead and give it a moment here. It's going to solve the reference image first and once it has done that, then it will proceed to solve all the remaining images. So it's already found a solution for that reference image. Now it's extracting sources for all of the other images here in the data set. So as you can see here, it's pretty quick to, to do this batch solving and now it has applied the solution. So we now have 111 images uh, as opposed to 37 before because we had split uh, the three color channels and all 100 images, uh, all 111 images I should say, have now been plate solved. So now the next step is to do alignment. Uh, so with that being the case, I can go to action align images and because I have solved all the images, I can choose WCS match as the alignment mode. And again, if for some reason you're not able to solve all images, that's okay. You only really have to solve just the reference. Uh, if that's the case, you can always choose star match. But here, because I have solved all the images, I can choose this option. World Coordinate System is what WCS stands for. Um, and basically, again, it's just going to align the images using the plate solution attached to each image. So it's a nice option to have, but again, not required. And uh, if you want to, uh, this is the interpolation mode I'm using, Lanchos 3. So I go ahead and click OK, and it's pretty quick because uh, it already has a plate solution on each image. So alignment has now been completed. So now I go to Action, View Images, 
and give it a moment here to do that. And now here we are looking at, uh, this is a monochrome view, but we'd like to work with color. So now I can go selection by filter and choose auto RGB. So automatic red, green, blue, and that's going to create a stacked image using the color channels. So as I zoom in here, uh, certainly this is a nice initial step, but certainly more work to be done. The, the core is vastly overexposed, so we want to do something about that. So what can we do? Well, we can go to settings, display stretch, and choose uh, this hyperbolic stretch as the option. And what we'll notice is that it's very bright. Uh, by default, the background looks very bright, so we have to do something about that. Well, uh, you can adjust the sliders uh, to compensate for that. So here we have made an adjustment here, uh, but we'd also like to have some uh, adjustment of the core. Maybe we might think that the core is overexposed. So if you wanted to, you could try to adjust this slider here, but you don't want to do it too much because as you zoom in, you start to notice this sort of artifact. So that kind of tells us we might've gone too far. So we want to dial that back a little bit. And so I, I might choose this option here. And again, background is still a bit too bright for my taste. So I might want to adjust uh, this slider a little bit more here. And finally the tail, uh, maybe we might want to be able to have a little bit more uh, visibility of the tail. So perhaps if we adjust contrast a bit, that's kind of what that first slider is, but we can't do too much or the image starts to look too uh, grainy. Uh, it might have a bit more gradient uh, appearance. So again, this is just personal taste, but I think that might be a, a reasonable uh, setting here. So this is kind of a nice improvement over what we had before. So I'm going to go ahead and do file, uh, save entire field at 1x zoom, and then just choose a file name. And having done that, we can now see a comparison of uh, before and after. Okay, now one other option to consider is what type of stacking operation to perform. What I mean by that is uh, you'll notice that there is a setting here called dynamic stacking and associated with that is a drop down menu. So you've got average, maximum, median, K sigma regular, K sigma median, and I happen to use K sigma regular. But the question is, what would it have looked like if we had chosen a different option? So for example, if I zoom in a little bit more on the core here, uh, you can start to notice the impact of these different settings. So average, if I regenerate the stack here, uh, that's what that looks like. It looks pretty nice because it's nice and smooth. However, there is now a noticeable amount of satellite trails uh, evident in the image uh, because average does not typically reject uh, those kind of outliers that would be uh, in, present in the image. Uh, certainly it's even more pronounced if you would choose something like maximum. So again, re regenerate the stack. So the satellite trails become very obvious uh, using a setting like maximum. Now you might think, well, median would do a pretty good job at rejecting that, and of course it does. Uh, however, the core looks a little bit more, I want to say artificial or, or something of that nature. It's, it's not nearly as smooth as what you get with average. So here, here again, that's just what average looks like. But uh, we want something that's kind of a good compromise between the two. So that's kind of why I lean towards K sigma. And again, you have these two different options of it, but I have to choose regular. And really what that's going to do is it's going to sort of act as a blend between average and median. So if I click auto RGB here once more to regenerate the stack, you'll notice that the satellite trails are absent for the most part. I can't really see them. And the core of the comet looks pretty decent. It's not overly artificial. Uh, and certainly when you're at 1x zoom, it looks perfectly fine. So again, it's just, again, another personal taste personal preference option, but I did want to include that as a, another setting that you might consider uh, when constructing some astrophotography output. And for a more advanced topic, uh, again, there's also the setting of color calibration. So that's another setting here, uh, color calibration. And so of course, uh, by default, it's going to enable these three options here. Uh, the multiply option in particular, uh, this makes it look really dark. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, just because it's scaling the image. And so you'll have to readjust uh, the uh, hyperbolic stretch. Uh, so if I uncheck multiply, then that's what that looks like. 
but uh, again, we could make the image look fine uh, with Multiply. You just have to make an adjustment. But what it allows you to do is if you had to do some kind of color correction, if you wanted to scale red into the image, you could, uh, or maybe make it look more green, you could do that. Uh, so I'm not going to go into much discussion with this uh, option here just because that would really make this a long video. But just to make you aware of it, if you wanted to play around with the color calibration, uh, you could do so. Uh, so you have multiply, you have add. So if I wanted to add in some blue, make it really blue, I could do that as well. So that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see you next time.